All right, so now that we know a little bit about our system, let's talk about how that can help us troubleshoot. So question one, do we have power? All right, you get a call, the, the line has lost power. Well, is your plug obviously uh, seated in? A lot of times that might, that those are twist plugs. So a lot of times they might not be seated correctly. Um, if you get lucky, your problem could be there. I've seen this happen a couple of times. Um, if you know that your plug is good, you know your, obviously your breaker starts from the breaker, you know your breakers are good, then come right to your 20 amp fuse. Um, test for your 120 here, test for your 120 here. You know your fuse is good. You know you're supplying power through your circuit from there. Um, and from there, you can just follow the power. You should get 120 here. You should get 120 here. You should get 120 here. Um, now, to talk about like some specific examples of troubleshooting, we'll use some SEV2 events that we've had recently. And so <clears throat> one of the SEV2 events we had, um, they lost power. Plug was good. Breaker was good. Open the control box, and the first thing I see is right here, this this relay, the green light was lit. And that green light gets lit when one of your start-stop switches is activated and turned to the stop position. Um, and just to verify, I, I verified I had my 120 here, my 120 here, my 120 here, my 120 here, if you can see right here. And right here, no 120. So voila, my, my relay is energized. I know I'm not getting my voltage on the other side of it. Um, and so the way this relay works is it's normally closed. So normally the circuit stays closed and lets the 120 flow through. But when it gets the signal from these two lines, the 24 and the 1, to feed to here, when it gets that signal and, and, the, and the 24 volts flows through it, then it um, opens this relay and we lose power here. So basically... If you come to your control box, your light is on, you don't have power coming through here, then you know with almost a certainty that it's going to be a problem with one of your switches. Um, and in this case, it turns out it was, but it didn't end there. Um, we checked for switches that were bad. Um, and our switches, you know, we'll talk about this in a different video, but our switches they, that we currently have, you know, they like to, they like to strip. They like to come loose. There's a jam nut behind the switch that likes to come loose and that causes the switch to get stuck in the depressed state which um you know gets stuck in the stop position um but when that happens the normal light that you have that indicates that you're in stop you don't have that um so it's it's a pretty big issue so you have to go check all the switches on the line find out which ones are bad so in this case we found one switch that was bad and i'm thinking okay good we got it um we changed out the switch no go, no power. So I came back to the control board, was thinking, oh, I, I wonder if it's this relay itself, although it's probably not. I mean, it's, it's a normally closed relay, you know. Um, maybe it could be the component that the relay plugs into. Um, but we're thinking it has to be a switch. Um, my teammate I was working with that night, he continued to check switches while I was looking at this board. He found another switch that was bad, and as soon as he wiggled it, it came back. Um, it knocked back out of its depressed state and voila power so um in that case when this is lit up and you know there has to be a problem with the switch um an easier way to to troubleshoot than even what we did just to keep going down the line um and this will also tell you for 100 percent certain if you have a problem in this control box or not especially here is this yellow control line this is what feeds your voltage here that triggers this relay so all you gotta do is go go to the first place downstream from here that you can disconnect that yellow control line. Um, you could also disconnect some wires here, but it's better safe practice, I think, to just control, to just disconnect it at the connector that's made for that. So go downstream to the first yellow connector, disconnect it. Um, and in that, your power will come back on um, so long as there's no, no other issue going on here. So disconnect that yellow connector downstream. And then if you get power through here, you know this is all good. And what's even better is in this situation, we only had 30 minutes of downtime in that particular SEV2 event. But if you follow this method here, um, you know, you, you're going to be, you're going to have the conveyor running in, in a matter of minutes. Um, 
because you're going to restore power here. Now you will have cut off all of the switches on the line, so the switches are going to be inoperable, but power will be running on a conveyor. And now you have some time to go go down and check all the switches and find out where the bad switch, or in this case, switch is, are. Um, so that's one one SEV2 event we had. Now the other one we had that's a lot more difficult to, that was a lot more difficult to assess. Um, in this case, we had power um, coming through all this. Um, but our speed box was bad, and this is the actual one that was bad. And we kind of backed our way into figuring out a way to, to know that these are bad. Um, but essentially, your A plus and A minus lines that are going to the motor and powering the motor, um, you're not going to get, they're not, they're not going to be going through the motor because the motors aren't turning. So you're not going to get your uh, voltage, correct voltage is coming through here. And so, you know, you should get your zero voltage across them. But if you measure each one to the ground, we found something interesting. If you measure your A minus to the ground, you'll get around negative 52 volts. Might change a little bit, you know, just a little bit depending on which speed box. And if you measure your A plus, you should, if, if, the, if the speed box is good, you should get a different number. Because if you turn this speed box all the way down to zero, turn the speed dial all the way down to zero, then essentially you're just creating a loop where the power is just returning back to the speed box and you're going to read the same on both lines. So if you read this to the ground and this to the ground, you'll read both of them like negative 52. And then as you speed this up, you will actually increase the voltage that you see on A+. It'll keep increasing all the way to zero and then even surpass zero and go up to 20, 30, 40, 50. I've, I've read a lot of different numbers. Um, but if you know your speed dial is not at zero, you know your brake is not on, you know your power is not off, and you're measuring both these to the ground and getting the same value, it, you know that your speed box is cooked. Um, now, in that case, it was an issue of what was causing that speed box because we were also having intermittent power problems where they would turn off switches and then go to turn it back on and they wouldn't get power back. Um, and what we ended up founding in that case was... If you know everything is good in your control box, right? if you know everything's good there, then the next logical step, you know, is to come to here. And we end up, this wire right here, this light green wire, um, one of our technicians, Brad, he ended up finding that this wire was loose. And, you know, loose ground wires can cause all kinds of issues. And so we believe what happened was... This, this wire being loose, at some point it must have contacted one of these other motor wires in some way and uh, just um, shorted out that speed box. So if you know everything is good, if you know everything is good in your control box, right, you know whether you know this is bad or not, um, the, next, the, only, the next place to come is to this first little junction box, right? And what's kind of cool about the system is you'll have a few different junction boxes where you can where you can look for loose wires and see what's going on. But then you also have your terminal blocks, these ones that go down about every three motors. So you can come to each one of these motors and the readings you get here should match the readings you're getting um, down at the other box. Um, so these uh, jun little junctions that are about every you know three motors, you can use these to kind of isolate where exactly your issue is. So that's about all I wanted to talk about for today's little troubleshoot video. Um, thanks for watching.